delighted to be joined by my great colleague Alexander Smart today uh, to dive in what I think will be a really fascinating uh, subject. Alexandra has a, a really broad background that I think is particularly uh, pertinent for what we're going to talk about today. Not only, I know you've studied this at, at business school and so on, but actually through your career building a brand, Ginger and Smart, from essentially nothing into a brand that lots of people, even I know, um, that I know has now changed hands and, and you successfully sold a few years ago. Um, but, but thinking about how hyper-competitive and challenging and how many different stakeholders and the complexity of that, that environment must have been. And today we're going to kind of riff about influencing and how to sort of shape and bring people along and, and things like that. And I can only imagine what that must have been like for you as you're going through that journey. So I think you're just so perfectly placed to sort of, you know, provide some of your perspectives and insight as we, as we chat today. So I'm really excited to, to dive into this. So tell me, like, what was your experience with this? I mean, as you look back uh, through time, is this something that suddenly occurred to you that you really needed to sort of think about how to influence people effectively? Or is it just something that naturally evolved? Or I mean, tell us more about your experience with this. Well, I wish someone had told me what I'm about to discuss with you okay. <laughs> earlier in my career, because it didn't actually occur to me as a skill or a characteristic or um, a leadership motivation mm -hmm. at, at, at all through my career until really relatively recently. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's, uh, you know, of importance to me and I think a great topic is because in, in the work that I do now as an executive coach or a consultant or an advisor or being on boards or, or any of that sort of um, world that I'm in, you know, we talk a lot about you know, communication and feedback and emotional intelligence and all those leadership skills that, that you need to be effective in these changing times. But also a lot of people ask me, how can I increase my influencing skills? How can I take all those leadership skills that I'm learning and developing and I'm aware of and all that good stuff, but use them to influence in my work environment, in my life? And, and what I realised in thinking that through is, is that influencing is really the North Star of all those leadership skills because what influence is, is impact. Mm -hmm. So how can I take my leadership experience, my mm -hmm. skills and all the things that we're all learning in this continuing learning environments um, and use those to influence and impact and be effective. Mm -hmm. So, so in, in terms of defining what influence really is, it's, it's how, how can you impact more efficiently and effectively? Mm -hmm. How can you deliver? Mm -hmm. How can you land your purpose? How can you use everything in your toolkit to change, to make impact. Right. And so, you know, the question is, how do you take all of those skills and then apply them with that mindset? Right, okay. So this is, so you're, you're sort of coming at this from the perspective of how to have the, the most amount of impact in whatever it is you're, you're working on, I, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, great. So, um, and, and you said that this has sort of come to you recently. <laughs> Uh, tell me more about that. Because in the process of coaching, right, whether whether in our pods or one on one, mm -hmm. often I'm asked, "Well, how can I actually increase and improve on my influencing skills?" And so to unpack all of that is to talk now about how do you build that muscle? Mm -hmm. how, how do you first of all have an awareness of the importance of influencing, which I wish I'd had in my career, um, and actually using that strategically in your career? I love the idea of it being a muscle. I mean. We all have lots of muscles, right, that are all designed to do different things. So this is, sounds like a, a muscle that's designed to have impact and so on. So, okay, so, so this is the muscle then. Let's, let's stick with that. That's a great metaphor. Um, so how, how, do we, how do we strengthen it? Well, I think the thing about influence is, is, is it's a journey. It's a, it's a, you don't wake up one morning having influence. You know, it's something that takes time to develop. And I, I think the first and foremost key skill required to develop influence is communication. Uh, and it sounds blatantly obvious, we need communication skills for all sorts of things within leadership. But, you know, there's a reason why people like Barack Obama and Oprah and uh, Richard Branson and titans of industry have influence. And it's because they communicate well with clarity, with charisma, with confidence. Those are all big charismatic personalities. 
Well, well, they are, and you don't have to be the most charismatic person in the room to have influence. But the, often, those sorts of people, it's as much about the message as it is the way it's being delivered. You know, and they build their influential skills by having good communication skills. I think that's a really interesting one. Like maybe it isn't. You know, well, I, I also believe you know you don't have to be the loudest and the most charismatic, but there is something about the communication that just lands. Like there's a, that somehow, you know, like Harry Truman was a very different U.S. president to Barack Obama in terms of their style, but he's known to be like highly effective, mm -hmm. right? But a very different style. So there's something about the sort of that back to the impact that these people have that they don't have to be the loudest or the maybe the most articulate but mm. is there something that they're doing is it the clarity do you think is it the, like do you have a hunch on what that is well I think it's many things I mean it's storytelling you know okay. it's the it's how, how you interpret and and because ultimately to be influential you have to be inspiring you have to be motivating and you have to create action and you have to mm. get people to mm. come along for the journey yeah. so you have to be a good orator in order to get people's attention and bring them along the journey and influence the outcome mm. of whatever you're delivering. So, so I think all of that, all of the above. Um, but if you're not good at communicating and you're not, it, it, then it's very difficult to influence one person, let alone a room of people or a team or an organisation yeah. to deliver impact. Mm. So, so I think that's first and foremost the key skill to develop influence. And I think the second skill to develop is becoming an expert at what you do. You know, okay. so that might be just being really good at your job, or being an expert in your field, or what, whatever industry or trade or um, it is that you do in your career. Mm -hmm. But being good at it draws people to you for advice, mm -hmm. for knowledge sharing, mm -hmm. for mentorship, mm -hmm. um, and so expertise gives you influence mm -hmm. uh, at whatever it is that you do. So I think that's incredibly important to remember that. And you don't get that overnight either. You have to grow in your leadership skills or your uh, industry skills yeah. or your job skills to get become an expert. But being yeah. aware of that mm. as one of the tools in your toolkit towards influence is important. Mm. And the third one is really about building a network. And every business school in the world will tell you the importance of a network. But from the perspective of influence, uh, you know, being strategic about who's in your in your network. You know, it, obviously you need people above, beside and below you in a 360 network environment, but having a champion, you know, in your network or several or mentors that can help you by virtue of their influence, grow your influence is really important. So it's not just making sure that you've got people that you can rely on to get the next job or what have you. It's really being strategic about how you build your influence and for impact. And, and I think the next kind of key towards having influence is, is confidence. You know, it's, it's like any leadership school, you fake it till you make it often. <laughs> is that what do you, th you think is, is required? Well, I think it's a good strategy, that? fake it, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but often it is, actually. Yeah. Well, really. because a lot of people really, you know, they say, oh, it's disingenuous, it's not authentic or, or whatever, or, um, I don't know, lots of people, you know, don't abide by that or feel uncomfortable with that, that's all. Mm -hmm. You think that's legitimate? I think that it's not even just about influence and leadership skills. You often have to fake it till you make it, you know, across lots of things. And um, to, to that point about disingenuous, sometimes when I've had these conversations, people look at influences not ne as ego driven, yeah. not necessarily a positive. Yeah, yeah, it, has a, it can have a, 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 a kind of a, almost a dirty, uh, what are you peddling, or uh, I don't know, just a. Yeah. Or, you know, it's got a politician kind of yeah. air to it. Yeah. Which is why I'm reframing it to talking about impact. You know, mm. to influence is to have impact, is mm. to deliver, is mm. to um, provide solutions. I think when you do that, you broaden out the right. whole idea of it. Right, right. Because, and, and to manage change. So from a leadership perspective, that's, you know, that's really mostly what you end up doing and being is a, is a change agent of some description. And so you have to have influence slash impact to be able to deliver. Yeah. So it kind of just reframes it into, a, I think, a much more effective way of thinking about yes. influence. Yes, yes. So, so we've talked about, you know, sort of what it is and the, the, the idea and you've, you've widened it out. Uh, we've talked about you know why it's important. We've talked a bit about how to build the the muscle. 
if I'm a if I'm a um, you know a busy executive and and um, got lots of pressures and, and so on and I feel like I I can have or I need to have more influence or I could be more effective at my influencing. You've given us some some tactics to, to you know three very good I- ideas. Is there some way to kind of like wrap our arms around all of that? I mean, like what are, what should I be sort of taking away from this, if you will? So the idea really is, is that as you hone your leadership skills, you, there is a North Star to all of that, mm-hmm. you know, it, and that is influence. It, it's many things, but it's also influence. And so to be a good leader, you have to be influential and you have to deliver impact. And I think the key first step is have an awareness of that and be strategic about it and then practice it. Because mm-hmm. like a lot of these leadership skills that we talk about, you know, they take time. You've got to try it on. You've got to see how it feels. You've got to mm-hmm. fake it until mm-hmm. you get the confidence to be able to kind of come across in a way that is convincing and authentic. Mm-hmm. And, and for a lot of people, that takes some time. Mm-hmm. So, but I think the first step is just, and, and this is again back to my experience. I wish someone had sat me down and said, listen, there, there's two ways you could do this. You could put your head down and build a business and stay within that framework. Or you could look around and realise that there is probably more efficient ways of getting there and that is more, going to be more impactful. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, the, that's the line that I draw between often we're, we're so caught up as executives doing what, what it is that we do and trying to be better at it and try to learn and be coached and all those sorts of good things. But it's almost like you have to step up one level further and mm-hmm. see where, that, where you can be most impactful. Mm. Do, you, do you think, Alex, that there's maybe a little bit of an internal handbrake on people? that maybe holds them back from being impactful with their influencing? I think probably for a lot of people it might feel uncomfortable. Mm. And often as we grow as leaders, we have to go through those moments of feeling uncomfortable. But again, I think it comes back to you know awareness and then knowledge and then practice. Mm. Um, if, you, if you get the tip that honing your influencing skills will make you more impactful as a, and effective as a leader, then you've got something to work towards. Yeah, I mean, oftentimes psychologists talk about you know how to overcome a fear is through exposure. Mm. You know, and so face like it. face it, practice, mm. as as you said, you know, you're going to get you know more comfortable with it, better at it, and, mm. and so on. Where does feedback fit into this? Really importantly, <laughs> thank you for reminding me. <laughs> oh no, no, not at all. It's just I was just wondering I mean, if that's the case. I mean, we're, we're talking about it from from our personal perspective, I mean, but how do we know when we are being effective? You know, and so I'm thinking about feedback. Well, you know, after awareness and practice, mm. feedback, you know, mm. asking colleagues, mm. finding mentors, mm. learning from the champions that you're building around you of, of their own influence and, mm. and getting feedback and trying it on for size and, you know, learning how you can do those skills better. Mm-hmm. It's critical. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Are there any other final sort of thoughts that we should share with people today? I, I, I know that you know, you've talked about a lot of ideas in a very short period of time, and I'm sure we could spend like hours and hours on, on this, but are there final sort of thoughts that you think people should walk away with? Yeah, I think the, the, one of the things that I often do in, in coaching sessions is talk to leaders about what kind of leader they want to be mm-hmm. uh, and what are the attributes that they want to have in their leadership journey, um, and it's always you know similar. I want to be effective. I want to have resilience. I want to be liked. I want to deliver. All of those attributes are about influence. They all feed up into their leader's ability to influence and impact. Mm-hmm. So I think it's really important to sort of consider what kind of leader you want to be and how you want to impact. And in that very thought process, you're thinking about how you can influence. Mm-hmm. Just another spin on it. I think I think the fact that you've just reframed I love that the, the whole idea from impact it's it's not influence is a way it's like a vessel mm. to allow for managers and leaders to have more impact yes. I think that's just a beautiful reframing I don't think I would have landed on that so thank you oh, no I really enjoyed and I and I hope and I'm sure people will um, you know listen to this and sort of think wow I hadn't really thought about it that myself and I can go away and I've got some really practical now suggestions of things that I can do that is going to help me be more influential and therefore I'll have greater impact in whatever that might look like. So fantastic. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Kate. Great.